Uh, Captain Larry and we're looking at the classic uh, Seafarer depth sounder made in England. Uh, this has been in storage here with me for 35 years and uh, my fancy dancy digital instrument uh, packed it in and so I decided I would take this thing out and clean it up see if we can tune it up to the existing transducer and make it work thought well while we're doing this why don't we just uh, give everybody a look at it I like flasher transducers or f flasher uh, depth sounders they're easy to read uh, they're unambiguous uh, when you learn to read them you can learn to read a little bit about uh, what the bottom is like uh, they're very low power very, and highly reliable so here's the English version of them there's uh, lots of American versions I had one made by Heathkit in my little teak lady for years worked wonderfully and uh, this one uh, is pretty nicely uh, laid out it's got some nice little details I've taken the uh, cover off the back uh, six machine screws uh, nice little screws with uh, fiber washers on them uh, the back's got an o-ring and uh, rubber seals uh, where the wires go in and out so they made some effort to make it uh, more or less water resistant so let's take a look at the inside um, Bakelite circuit board it's not a G10 glass board um, but it's uh, nicely laid out and uh, even all the component uh, designations are marked on the board so you know what you're looking at I found on the motor uh, these two little tags and one of them says 1671 so either that's when it was made or when it was uh, serviced I think it's probably when it was made and this other notation 220F I have no idea what that means uh, anyway that was uh, they were glued to the motor which spins the rotor and the flasher and they're just coming off so I took them off and mounted them on tape and I'll put it back on the motor so uh, what do we got here the output terminal where the uh, coax went to the transducer and uh, a hole in the back where you could uh, pipe in DC power and this is nice because uh, they've set this thing up so that you can run it on 12 volts 24 or 32 volts so whatever kind of supply voltage you have on your boat uh, they accommodated you they also made provisions for an internal battery I've got to look this up uh, this says for the uh, let's get this so we can read it here uh, UK da 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 USA where's USA Canada USA Canada and Australia New Zealand ever ready 276 I gotta take a look at that battery <coughs> and see what it was because I I can't remember uh, obsolete battery anyway here's the the depth range switch is a nice little uh, uh, silver plated switch um, the two um, here's the two low frequency coils T1 and T2 and my plan if this thing works was to try to tune it to uh, my existing transducer um, I've got to look at my documents on this that I downloaded. This is either runs at 150 kC or 200 kC. I can't remember, but I think it was 50 kC different from what my Signet instrument uh, works at. So I'm going to have to go over the schematic and understand how this thing works a little bit and uh, uh, see what's cooking. But I thought what I would do today would be to fire it up and see if the flasher flashes and. Uh, maybe uh, try to get a frequency counter on here and uh, um, see what uh, see what it's really doing um, I don't know what happens if you run this thing without a load on the uh, transducer port but uh, probably nothing really bad I might put a dummy resistor across there just to give it a load but anyway this is uh, this is the basics of the uh, the rather simple um, flasher type uh, depth sounder. Um, I don't know a heck of a lot about how these things work. I need to study it, but obviously there's a 
uh, a, a high frequency or a low frequency oscillator, in this case about 150 kC, which is um, s still RF or subsonic uh, um, sound. And um, it transmits pulses to the transducer, and then the uh, transducer can not only transmit the pulse, but can also receive it, send it back here where it's amplified and um, detected and turned into a flash on the motor. And the motor speed uh, is controlled in such a way that um, the flash, the, the, the ping duration, the return duration, um, and the rotor speed uh, are in such a relationship that where you see the flash along the scale depends on how long it takes for that ping to to return. And I don't I don't know the mathematics of it, I, but I'm going to find out, and I'm also going to find out exactly how the little um, uh, transmitter and, and receiver uh, work and how, how the flashes are generated.